there to, um, to the concession stand in the back. As we continue our series, I want you all to repeat after me this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. I give you freedom to move in this service. I need your gift and your anointing in my life. Help me to minister to someone this week. Give me understanding as I read your word this week. Holy Spirit, open my mind, open my heart, and open my soul to hear the word of God today. Amen. We're going to be continuing our series at the movies, and today I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Into Darkness. I want you all to take a look at this. Welcome to our church. New life. Is Star Trek into darkness. But before we do that, we like to welcome all those that are watching us on the internet throughout the city of Chicago, uh, throughout the nation, and throughout the world. Welcome to New Life Pilsen here in Chicago, Illinois. Give them a warm welcome this afternoon. Uh, last week we talked about Man of Steel, uh, Superman. And I had my shirt, and I was looking for a Star Trek shirt. I couldn't find one. Uh, I was looking for a Star Trek shirt, so I couldn't find one. So I just put on my Captain Kirk, if he was Puerto Rican shirt, Guayaveta uh, shirt on. So this is the Captain shirt right here. Um, we learned last week during Superman that our vision as a church, and we learned what that vision was. It was, number one, to be known as that church. It didn't matter if they knew the name of New Life Pilsen. It didn't matter if they know my name. As long as they know there's a church over there, that church over there on the corner, and you need help, go to them. Uh, another part of the vision was to be a church that blesses other churches. And um, that's why we open up our, our, our churches, our daughter churches, our sister churches uh, in, in Lansing, Michigan, and St. Louis, Missouri, and Uganda, and Kenya. And as we continue to expand, uh, we're going to continue to open up more churches uh, not only in the city of Chicago, but throughout the nation and throughout the world. Also, the third aspect of our vision was to be a church that prays and disciples its people. And um, that's very important. That's why we have the internet prayer that will be coming up um, this Saturday uh, morning at 6 in the morning. We'll be having prayer over the internet, 630, excuse me. And uh, also we have our school moving forward and we have our Timothy school so that we can, and cell groups so that we can disciple uh, each and every one of you, so that you can grow in Jesus' name. Touch your neighbor and say, I have vision. We learned that Helen Keller once said that it's better to have vision than sight. It's better to have vision than sight. And that's why it's important that each and every one of you knows the vision of this church. You just need to know where we're going, the reason why we do what we do. And today we're going to look at the movie Star Trek, into darkness. And uh, if we have any Trekkies here, if we have any Trekkies, amen? Couple. We got a couple little Trekkies there. If you don't know anything about Star Trek or don't like the movie about Star Trek, let me give you a little history of what Star Trek is all about. It's about a group of people who explore new worlds and try to help them in whatever way possible that they can. You know, they got the famous people. You got Captain Kirk, you know, who was like the papi chulo of the group. He was the one that would date anybody, alien, green, yellow. He didn't care. He would, he would be out there. And uh, he was the one that would lead the, the captain, the, the, the ship. He was Captain Kirk. And then there was uh, 
Spock. You know, Spock was the Vulcan, and he was the one that used logic for everything. But he was half Vulcan and half human. And, you know, he had that thing, I, I can't do it, man, where you separate your two fingers. I'm not, I, I, I've always tried, but I could never do that. And he would say, live long. All you guys can do that stuff, man. There's something wrong with you guys. I'm going to pray with you. I can pop my thumb, though, see? <laughs> I bet you can't do that. <laughs> So Mr. Spock, he would do whatever you guys were doing there. I mean, I'll do it with my, like that. He would go like that, and he would say, live long. And Yeah, see, we, we got some more trackies that know that. Y'all just were afraid to raise your hand. Yeah, he would say, live long and prosper. And then you got, you know, Bones, and you got a doctor, and you got um, uh, O'Hara. And, and it, it, it was just a, a, a great show. I, I love Star Trek. I'm a big Star Trek fan, I love the next generation, the old Star Trek, and, and um, you know, I, I love the line, I'm giving her all she's got, Scotty, you know, <laughs> the ship's about to blow, you know, and th those are great lines, great moments, and uh, Star Trek is, is, is a great experience, and the mission of Star Trek is to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, and um, this particular movie, Into Darkness, uh, it's about the Star Trek and the crew and a man named Khan. And if you know about Khan, and he was in the old series of Star Trek, uh, he is like the nemesis of Captain Kirk. And Captain Kirk would shout out his name. Every time he got him upset, he would yell out, Khan! Yeah, there we go. You know, and those of you who don't know anything about Star Trek, you probably just think now I'm crazy. But that's what he would do. You would watch it, and he would just get upset and, Khan! And that was like the tagline. Everyone remembered that. And Khan, who is the enemy, he comes off at first to look like to be their friend. But he turns on them, and Captain Kirk and the crew go after him to try to stop him from his evil plan. And um, I want to give you a, a taste of this movie. So take a look at this um, video of Star Trek Into Darkness. Star Trek Into Darkness, it's, it's an action-packed movie. So if you like action, you definitely would love uh, Star Trek. And But today, as we go deeper into our mission, we are to boldly go where no church wants to go. See, our mission as a church is to reach people that nobody wants, like the gangbangers. There's no churches fighting out there, or not many churches out there fighting to say, we want gangbangers in our church. There's not many churches out there fighting for the prostitute, going out there saying, that's the kind of people we want to come into our church. They're not fighting for the gay. They're not fighting for the drug addict. They're not fighting for the alcoholic. See, but God has called us on a mission to boldly go as a church 
where no other church wants to go, to reach those people that they don't want in their building. We don't want those kinds of people here. They're going to mess it up. They're going to stink it up. They're going to smell it up. Well, those are the people exactly that God has called New Life Pilsen to go out and reach, to go out and boldly go where no church wants to go. See, every church wants the doctor, wants the lawyer, wants the one with a lot of money, the rich man. See, but God's promise to us is that if we reach the people that nobody wants, he's going to send us the people that everybody wants. When we go out there and we reach these children in our community, we go out there and we reach the gangs, we reach the drug addict, we reach the prostitute, we reach the homeless, we go out there and we share the gospel with the people that, that society wants to just sweep under the rug and avoid. God says, my heart goes out to those people. When Jesus was here ministering, he would minister to the people that nobody liked. He especially went to the Samaritan. And if you know the history, the Jewish people hated the Samaritan, and especially a Samaritan woman. That was worse to the Jewish people than a dog. They looked at them lower than dogs, than animals. They were nothing. And Jesus made a point to go out and reach that lady who was a Samaritan in front of everybody so that everybody could see his heart. His heart was to reach those that nobody wants. And that's our heart. That's the heart of New Life Pilsen. If you want to be in a church where you're just next to people who got it all together, then you're in the wrong church. We want a church of messed up people because of messed up people, those are the ones that know that they need God. You see, you don't know that you need God until you realize you're messed up. See, I came to a realization one day in my life when I was 17 years old that my life was messed up. My life was jacked up from the floor up, and I needed Jesus Christ. Until that day, I thought everything was okay. I didn't need the Lord. But when I came to the realization that my life was jacked up, I received that revelation that Jesus Christ could come and change my life. And he came into my life, and my life has never been the same. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. And that's why we as a church, we need to have a heart for everyone in this community. Doesn't matter their background. Doesn't matter what's in their bank account. Doesn't matter if they have a house or don't. Doesn't matter if they're selling their body. Doesn't matter their sexual orientation. It doesn't matter where they're going, what they did, what they said. God says, those are the people that we want to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our job is just to share the gospel with them. God is going to clean them up. God is going to take care of them. God is the one who's going to restore them. We ain't got to worry about all that. All we got to do is do what God has commanded us to do is go and preach the gospel in all nations to all people. That's our mission, church, to boldly go where no church wants to go. There's a lot of churches that are satisfied with just coming to church on Sunday and and a weekday service. They come in, they hear the messages, they worship, they go home. But the community doesn't even realize that they're there. If they were to shut their doors, they wouldn't even miss them. See, we need to be at a place, and we're getting there as we continue to move forward with the vision that if we was to shut our doors, the community would notice. Because if you could shut your doors and the community just moves on like nothing, then you haven't even made an impact. You're just here making noise. You're not a church. See, a church makes an impact. You see, if we were to shut our doors right now, there would be over 40-some children who wouldn't have a place to go Monday through Friday. Believe me, it's going to make an impact. There's going to be young people that wouldn't have a job. It's going to make an impact. There's a community that wouldn't have the events that they have because we would shut our doors. See, and as we continue to grow, that impact gets bigger and bigger. You want to be a a part of something that's bigger than you. We want to boldly go to places nobody wants to go. 
That's why we're out there in Uganda, Kenya. There's not a lot of churches out there fighting to go to Uganda and Kenya. We didn't go there, and there was like 50 churches there at the airport just ready to go spread the gospel. People are not fighting to go to Kenya and Uganda to spread the gospel. They're barely even going out the door here in their community to spread the gospel, let alone Kenya and Uganda. But see, that's what God has called us to do, to go where no one wants to go. Our vision as a church is to help the city as much as we can. We're to boldly go and preach the gospel into darkness. We're to go into the dark. The darker, the better. That's where God has called us, to reach darkness. Because why? We bring the light. Jesus Christ says, you are the light of the world. And what does light do? It destroys darkness. These lights that are here on the stage, they're taking away and removing all darkness so that you're able to see me. If these lights were to go off, you wouldn't be able to see very well because this room would be dark. And you see, that's what the world is. You're one of these lights. And you notice it right away. You don't have to be a rocket science to figure out, hey, there's a light on. Why? Because you're in darkness. And these lights are shining bright. What are you saying, Pastor? This world is a dark world. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist for someone to figure out that you are bringing in light. See, the problem is, sometimes we're not bringing in the light. Sometimes our light is burnt out. So when we go into a dark world, they don't see it because it's not working. See, some of us, we need to change our light bulb because we have allowed the fire of God to burn out. And now we're not producing light. So when we go into the dark world, the people around us don't even notice because they can't see the light. But you see, as visible, as easy as you're able to see this light, as it enters into the darkness and pierces the darkness, it's as easy as people should see your light when you walk into this dark world to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, we can't be afraid to take a risk. As a church, we can't be afraid to take a risk. And as a church, we can't be afraid to fail. Because if we play it safe, we'll never do anything great for God. See, I'm not afraid to mess up. I'd rather have people who are messing up than people who just play it safe. I'd rather have people say, let's do this outreach, and we do it, and nobody shows up. I'd rather have that happen than everyone just sit down and just say, well, at least we're okay. We didn't lose no money. We didn't lose no faith. We didn't, but you didn't go out there. See, Jesus said he would risk the one for the 99. He said, I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to leave these 99 sheep to go find that one. See, that was a risk. Why would you risk just one sheep when you already have 99? See, Jesus wasn't afraid to take a risk. We as a church, we can't be afraid to take a risk. See, the movie of Star Trek, you'll see Captain Kirk, he wasn't afraid to take risks. When it was to save people, he would put his life on the line to save. You see, as a church, we cannot play it safe anymore. The times of playing it safe and the time of just doing the status quo has to come to an end. We got to be a church that's not afraid to go into the darkness, to go and take a risk, to save that one soul. Even if we got to invest this type of money, this type of effort, just to reach one, Jesus said it's worth it. Of all this work we're going to do on Saturday, if we only just reach one soul out of it, it's worth it. Because Jesus says we need to be risk takers. See, to be a part of New Life Pilsen, you got to be a risk taker. You can't be afraid to fail. When we went to Uganda and Kenya, that was a risk. We didn't know exactly what we was getting into. And we were driving to Kenya, that was a huge risk. Amen. <laughs> We definitely didn't know what we got ourselves into as we were flying in the air, thinking we were Superman with that van and Pastor Godfrey. That was a risk. We put our life on the line. Y'all don't totally understand 
But the four of us that went, Sister Delphia and Sister Debbie and Via, they understood because they experienced that risk. We was in another country. When we got stopped at the border of Kenya and Uganda trying to figure out how they're going to let us cross. We could have said, oh, we ain't going to just waste our time no more. Let's just go back home. Let's just go back to Kampala, play it safe. You see, God hasn't called us to be playing it safe. God has called us to take risks. But why? Because God is on our side. When Jesus told Peter to get out of the boat, that was a risk. He had to take a risk and put his life on the line. When he told him, come and follow me, that was a risk. Because they didn't know who he was totally. They just saw this man who said, come and follow me. I'm the son of God. They had to take a risk that he was who he said he was. We have to be risk takers here. Look at Isaiah 58 verse 7 says this. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, is it not you're not to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? See, the Bible is telling us this is what we're supposed to be doing as a church. Sharing what we have with the poor, the homeless. They're our own flesh and blood. We can't turn our backs on them. We can't just close our eyes to the ills of society. God says, that's who I came for. I came for those who have nothing. So that because they realize that I'm everything. You see, when you got a lot of money in the bank and you got housing and cars, and you get to a point where you don't need God, you'll be like, why do I need God? Look what I got. Like the rich man. Look what I have. Why do you need God? See, you don't realize you need God until you realize you're in need of God. For some of us, that might have to be a total meltdown of our life where God has to allow our finances to be taken away, allow our house to be taken away, allow our family to be, allow everything to be stripped away until he can get you to a point where he can get your attention. See, some people are not as hard-headed, and God can get a hold of them when they have it all still. But sometimes we get so hard-headed that God has to remove everything to grab our attention so they realize who he is. He had to do that with Job. He allowed the enemy to take everything because Job has some lessons to learn in his life of who God was. But then the Bible says that God blessed him double for his trouble. Follow me now. Our mission is to see a need and then meet it. How can we call ourselves Christians and turn our backs to the needs of this community? See, God gives us a promise. If we take care of those who are in need, he's going to take care of us. Look at Isaiah 58, verse 8 to 9. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. Everyone say quickly. quickly. Your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. In order to get God's attention, the Bible says, meet the needs of the poor. Meet the needs of those that nobody wants to be around. And God says, when you do that, you got my attention. I'm going to take care of you. You will call on me, and I'm going to answer, and I'm going to help. And I will say, here am I. See, the Bible tells us that miracles will quickly appear for us, and God will protect us from our enemies because we're meeting the needs of the poor. You see, our church has gotten a reputation in the community of a heart to serve. We got the ear of key leadership in the city. 
were able to speak to the CEO of the Chicago Public Schools and tell her, her name is Barbara Bird Bennett, say, this is the needs of the community in Pilsen. We're having a back-to-school event. We need school supplies for our children. We need you to come through. We need Chicago Public Schools to partner with us. You know, there, there's probably thousands of back-to-school events going on throughout the city where they give out school supplies, so on and so forth. But there are only a few that CPS backs up with supplies that come from them. How do we get that? How do we get that influence to get the ear of the people in this community? How do we do that? By serving the needy, by serving the poor. When you do that, God begins to increase your influence. So they begin to hear. When they have a need, they begin to call our church. Hey, pastor, we have this need. Can you help us? And as best as I can, I try to help them. Even when I don't know where it's coming from, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to help you. Then I pray to God, God, how am I going to do this to make this happen? Just uh, last week or so, they had a need of, of packing up some supplies for some events that they had. So they call me and say, Pastor, we need some people to come here. Do you have anybody? And remember how God has provided us with some jobs for young people. I said, I said, I got it. I didn't know how I was going to make it happen. I didn't know the scheduling of them. I'm like, but let me talk with them and see how we can make this happen. So we, I talked with the leadership. Hey, can we make this happen? And they said, yeah, we'll make this thing happen. So we sent young people over there that was able to work. And uh, on the event, we had Safe Haven event on a Friday. And I was speaking with her. And she was like, hey, Pastor, those young people that you sent us were awesome. They were the best young people, man. They worked so hard. They helped us so much. We thank you for your heart of your young people. We thank you for the heart of your church to be there that every time we are in need, you guys are there. Somebody praise the Lord for that. How is that? Of all the churches in the city, Thousands and thousands and thousands of churches. They call on us. We have another program that we're working on with CPS right now. Working on the back to school and thousands and thousands of organizations and churches they could work with. We're one of them that they call and say, hey, can you get this done? We need this done. And, and then that's when I praise the Lord. I always say, yeah, I'm going to get it done. Then I got to pray, God, help me to figure this out. Give me the people. And God always provides. God always provides, and we get it done. And we get it done with excellence. And every time they tell me, Pastor, when you do that work, we never have to worry. Yeah. Other organizations, you know, we got to, you know, check behind them and always make sure, you know, they still do that for us. But they know that. They're like, we don't even really have to do it. We just do it because, you know, we can't show favoritism. We, we got to go. But we know that when your people are out there, top notch, Amen. the best. Why? It's because we serve a mighty God. We serve a God that sees what we're doing and then begins to build us up so that we have influence and favor with the people in the community. With our alderman, we're able to call him and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. This is what we need help in. And, and year after year, they're able to help us. Why? Because when we bring in AIM, we don't just say, okay, Aim, you're all just for us. You know, only you can help this church and nobody else. When we bring in the groups, we tell them, hey, I call up the aldermen and say, hey, uh, what do you need help in? We got these young people. Can they help you? Okay, they can do this. They can do this. I call the school and we talk to Mr. Butler. Hey, Mr. Butler, how can we help you? We got these young people and they're able to help. We send them over there. We be, send them throughout the city, throughout the community, reaching out to the poor, reaching out to the elders, reaching out to young people, cleaning streets, cleaning uh, areas of parks, and, and doing all the work in the community. And where do they 
see. They know that that church over there has a heart for the community, has a heart to serve. So what does it do? It gives us a voice in the community. It gives us a right to speak. And who do we speak for? The ones who can't speak for themselves. These children. When I'm there with the ear, I'm, I'm at the ear of the alderman. I'm at the ear of the CEO. When I get the ear of, of the mayor, I speak with them and say, this is what we need for this community. This is what I need for the children. This is what I need for the young people. When I can get an ear, I let them know. And when it comes through, and we've seen it happen. We've seen our young people were able to go to camp. God bless so that we were able to send young people to camp. And, and most of them didn't have to pay a penny to be able to make it to camp. We see we got their jobs. We had a year. I need young people. I need jobs for our young people. How does that happen? It's because of the influence. You see, I could easily go up to them and tell them, hey, what about me? I could easily talk to the CEO and say, I need a job at CPF. Hire me personally, and this is the salary I'll make. But you see, that's not what I'm about, and that's not what God has called me to. He's called me to be something bigger. He's called me to be the pastor of New Life Pilsen Church. That's the highest calling that a man or a woman can receive is a calling to lead the people of God. So if I was to take that position, I'd be taking a step down. And that's not what God has called me to be. But he's called me to be the voice of these children and young people and adults who don't get to speak to Barbara Bird Bennett, who don't get to speak with the, with the mayor, who don't get to speak with the alderman. He's called me and this church to be that voice. We are to go into the darkness and hear the cries of the people. Hear where the needs are. And then we are able to speak to those that can make changes in the community on the community level. And then we are to make a cry out to God Almighty who can make a change on the spiritual level and say these are the cries of the people who don't have your attention. But because we got your attention, God, we got your attention, leaders in the community, we're making out a clarion call. We're calling out into the the darkness, that life would come into the darkness, that light would come into the darkness, that we would be the bearers of light. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. <laughs> the Bible says if we do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing of fingers and the malicious talk, Jesus says a house divided can't stand. In order for us to grow, we got to be unified in this vision. We can't be fighting with each other. We can't be worrying about who has a title, who, who doesn't. Who's doing what? Who's working harder? Oh, man, I, I'm doing all the work around here. What are you doing? Oh, you know, pastor gave me this title, and you don't have this title. I'm so-and-so. Man, it's not about titles. Because when you get to heaven, God is not going to ask you, what is your title in the church? You know, I'm the sanitation engineer of the church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what you are. Titles, man, titles come, titles go. You know, it's not about that. You, those of you who know me close, you know that's my heart. You know, I'm not about, you got to call me Pastor Rob. You, got, you know, you got to kiss the ring and... You know, there's other places like that. You know, you got to call them certain names and, you know, you bishop and, you know, apostle. And I'm not about that. You can call me Rob. You can call me Pastor Rob. You can call me for dinner and call me whatever you want. Amen. <laughs> Just don't call me late for dinner. Don't call me after the food is done and then, and then give me the bill. Amen. Don't do that. If I'm going to get the bill, at least I need to get something out of it. Amen. It's not about that. I don't get hung up on titles. So here in the church, you can't get hung up on titles. You see, there was a, a mother of one of the disciples that tried to talk to Jesus about titles. Give my son, you know, the title to be on your right and on your left when you get to heaven. And Jesus was telling 
It's not about that. It's not about what you do for the church. It's not about, you know, I'm director of this, I'm pastor of this, I'm, you know, it's not about that. What it's all about is serving the poor. Serving the needy, going out and preaching the gospel to the gangbanger, the drug addict, the prostitute, to those people that nobody wants in their churches. That's what it's all about. And that's the reason why we're going out there on Saturday and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ by giving away school supplies, by bringing in whatever we can bring in so that we have an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And on this event, we're doing a prayer tent for the very first time so that people who need prayer can come under the tent and receive prayer, receive a miracle of God because we got people that are praying hard for a mighty move of God in this community. See, our mission is to penetrate the darkness. The Bible says no one lights a light and then hides it because the light is made to shine. It's to be able to see. Christians are called the light of this world. Jesus called us that. We are the light of this world. We got to penetrate the darkness. And the question today is, how is your light today? Is it bright? You see, when you go into a dark world, a dark room, and then your eyes get adjusted to that dark room. I know if you guys have done this before. You go into a dark room, your eyes get adjusted, and all of a sudden someone busts out a big bright light and flashes it in your eye. You're like, <laughs> you're like, man. Oh, you remember, remember that movie Gremlins? I mean, you remember that movie Gremlins? Bright light, bright light. And then they go crazy. That was back in the 80s, man. That was an 80s movie. That's when I was a young person. Amen. Not too long ago. Not too long ago. But that light, when when you're used to darkness and someone shines a light up in your eyes, man, you're, you're just like, man, what you doing, man? You trying to blind me or what? That's the way... Spiritually, people should be as you enter into this dark world because you're bringing the light. They got to realize, wait, whoa, whoa. They got to be able to realize the light is coming into the room. If they don't realize light is coming into the room, you need to check your bulb. Something is not right. They need to realize that light has entered the room. See, darkness is just the absence of light. Doesn't matter how weak a light is, though, a light will always penetrate the darkness, even if it's just that much. Whatever that light goes, it always penetrates darkness. Darkness will never be light. Because light, darkness is just the absence of light. So when light enters into the room, life enters into the room. When you enter in a room, you bring in light, and you bring in the light of Jesus Christ to this hurting and dying world. Isaiah 58, 12 says this, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins. This is what the Bible's telling us. And will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Our mission is to rebuild this community. Sin has destroyed this community, but the Bible says we are to raise up the foundation of this community. This community, at one point, and one time, was based on the word of God. Because that's what this country was based on. At one time, and one point in our history, and we are charged with rebuilding this foundation. We are called to repair broken walls, to restore the streets and the dwellings, homes, marriages. God has called us to repair the walls. See, walls are made for protection. God has called us to be repairer of these walls, to bring in the protection of God in this community. To restore the streets, to restore the homes. 
And how do we do that? By bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ. New life, we can't be satisfied with where we're at right now. We got to continue to boldly move forward. Not only here in Chicago, but throughout the nation and throughout the world. Our job, our mission is to go where no church wants to go. To reach people that no church wants to reach. Because when we do that, God says, I'll give you the people that everybody wants, that everybody's fighting for, because they're the ones who's going to fund this vision that God has for us. God will give the provision where there's vision. But first, we got to have that vision. And the vision of Jesus is to reach to the people that nobody wants. New Life Pilsen, we want them. We want a church full of gangs, drug addicts, prostitutes, gays, whatever. And let God do the work from that point. Nobody has to change to come into this church. You come the way you are. Let God do the rest from that point. But this church needs to be filled with that. Filled with people that nobody wants. Because as we fill it with the people that nobody wants, like I said, God is going to bring in the people that everybody wants. So that you are in a place where you can be sitting next to a millionaire and sitting next to a homeless man. That's the place that we need to build here in Pilsen. That's the vision here in Pilsen. And as we continue to expand what God is doing throughout this city and throughout this world, that's the vision. That those who sit next to you could be a millionaire and the next person could be a homeless, a prostitute, a gangbanger. In Jesus' name, amen? Let's stand up. Close your eyes with me this afternoon. For those of you watching on the internet, you say, Pastor Rob, I want to have that same heart as God. I want to go into the darkness. I want to reach out to those that nobody wants, that nobody loves. Society has just forgotten about. That's who I want to go out and minister to. If that's your heart, if that's your desire, you raise your hand and I'm going to pray with you. I can't see you, but God can see you. Now here in the sanctuary, you say, Pastor, we heard the vision yesterday. I mean, last week. Now we understand the mission. Just putting the vision into action, the mission, why we do what we do, what are we going to do, what motivates Pastor Rob, what gets him up every morning. What is the heart of this church? We're not afraid to take a risk. We're not afraid to fail. I'd rather fail 10 times than just sit down and do nothing. Thomas Edison once said, a failure is only a way to figure out how something don't work. Now I know that don't work, now I'm going to try this. He failed over 10,000 times before he created the light bulb. He said, all those other times, I just learned a way not to make it. I'm not afraid to fail. I just don't stay down. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Failure to me, that's fine. But failure is not final. You get back up. Don't be afraid to take a risk for God. Jesus took a risk for you. He left the 99 to reach you. He left the 99 to reach me. Church, new life is a risk-taking church. Not everything we're going to do is going to work, and that's fine with me. If you're a leader of a ministry, it's fine with me. You take a risk and you mess up. But then you just get back up, and then you go back at it. We'll never get anywhere without taking risks. We'll never move forward without failing. Now that 
you know the mission. You can say, Pastor, I want to get on board with the mission. Like Star Trek, they had the crew. You guys are the crew to New Life Mission. You are the crew. Each and every one of you play a certain role in the crew. We need you. I need you. And especially God needs you. If you say, Pastor, I accept my assignment. Whatever that may be, I'm willing to be a risk taker for this mission. If that's you here today, get up out of your seat. Make your way to this altar and begin to pray as we worship. Holy Spirit, have your way.
Have your way in this place. God, we want to go into the darkness. We want to reach those that society has forgotten about. Those that the church has forgotten about. God, that's our mission. God, we pray, God, that we are able to go into the darkness, God, with the light of Jesus Christ. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering this afternoon. Turn to your neighbor. Give him a hug in Jesus' name. As the lights come back on here. This Friday at 8.30, right after youth service, we are going to be going to the school and having a prayer time. Uh, and we're going to pray for our event on Saturday. So Friday at 8.30, if you want to come to the youth service, you're more than welcome. At 7.30, uh, they're going to be worshiping and, and praising God. But at 8.30, we're going to be out at the school as soon as youth service finishes, 8.30. We're going to head down to the school, and we're going to pray and just dedicate that location as the house of God for us on Saturday. Amen? Amen. 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 So uh, we want you to be a part of that. And uh, like Mike announced earlier, I just want to make sure that you put that on your calendar on the 31st. Uh, Pastor Gross from Assembly of Faith, um, one of our, our pastor friends, and, and really wants to just... Uh, spend time with us. He's inviting us to go to the park with him as our church, and he wants, he's going to bring some food. Uh, we can bring some food too, but he's going to bring food uh, for us, but, uh, you know, we should bring some food too so that we can cook, and then he wants to play us in softball. So uh, his church and our church, they, he wants to have a good game of softball, and this is how we fellowship. You know, it's not just about us. Uh, uh, like I said, that's our vision as other churches just want to hang out with us and, and fellowship with us, and um, we're more than glad to do that. So it's going to be at 155th in Pulaski and Midlothian, um, so uh, 11 o'clock, August 31st, it's a Saturday. So just put that on your schedule because we want to make sure he's, he's really excited about it. Uh, he's called me a few times already to just say, your church coming, your church coming. I said, yeah, they're going to be there. And he says, good, we're going to have a great time, great fellowship, and then just so you know, we're talking about New Year's Eve service with him and, and a couple other churches to have a, a joint service, how God is just unifying and bringing us together. And that's what it's all about. You know, it's not just about us here at New Life. We want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everybody. It's not just about us as Hispanics. We want to be blacks, whites, everybody just coming together and rejoicing in the presence of God. That's our heart. That's our heart here at the church. So grab your neighbor's hand. As we get ready to be dismissed, also, uh, it's going to be Diana's birthday this week, so we want to, she's catching me up, and Sergio, little Sergio too, man, everybody's birthday coming up this week, little Sergio, Diana, anybody else this week, Georgie, oh, Jeannie, Jeannie's birthday this week too, so all those three, uh, let's sing them a happy birthday, everyone, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jeannie, Sergio, Diana. Anybody else we forgot? Happy birthday to you. Amen. Woohoo! Woohoo! You guys, you guys are catching me up. Amen. The Bible says, "Be joyful always. Pray continually." Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good and avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. God bless you guys. We'll see you.